Hello, neighbor. Glad we're together again. Mr. Rogers coming back at you with another video. Another rebuild. It's been a month. That's what it comes down to. It's been nearly a month, give or take a day. Um, from the time I last published a fantasy... No, please, if you're if you're going to talk the entire video, you can you can leave. That's my cat. I don't know if you guys heard that. Where were we? Damn it. It's been about a month since I've done a fantasy-style rebuild where I last did the Pittsburgh Steelers, and we're about a week, um, actually exactly a week at the time I record this, from the Super Bowl. And the last video I published in a fantasy style rebuild was the Steelers on the day that they got eliminated by the Jaguars. So it's been a considerable amount of time. Today, we are undertaking the Carolina Panthers. Now, I know what you might be thinking if you're watching this on the day it dropped. But, Mr. Rogers, wasn't there an update that screwed over trading? I haven't installed that update to my knowledge on Xbox, so it's quite possible that trading is not screwed. If it is... Well, this is a realistic, and you've already already turned that turn. You've already decided that and realized that from the title. You didn't decide. I whatever. I don't know what I'm talking about. We're gonna jump into this Panthers fantasy style rebuild, unless it's not, in which case you'll know pretty quick. All right, I guess it auto updated. Uh, trading still screwed. This is realistic now. Awesome. So for a lot of you, this video just got a lot less fun. For many of you, you're like, ah, oh, score. All right, we're doing it. Um, EA, if you're watching this, which you're not, because you didn't respond to any of my tweets, you've responded to everybody else who talked about this uh, on Twitter, but not me. They don't like me. I don't, I mean, I, I, I get it. I get it. Um, but yeah, this is realistic style, so things have changed to, we're doing realistic moves only, and I want to say I'm going to use prospects for the first year in this class to make it a little bit more fun. Um, which I'll change their names after they're drafted. I'll show you them getting drafted and who I'll probably change them to. But this is the roster. Christian McCaffrey is going to start over Jonathan Stewart. Is he really a 78 overall? I Am I in the right roster? I don't know that I am. All right, rosters have been... I swear to God I changed it. Is it... Because he's still showing a 78 overall. I swear that Jonathan Stewart in this roster was an 83... Or an 84, actually. Christian McCaffrey was an 83. Maybe it's because of his style. Speed back. All right, let me go to scheme here. Because I'm tired of keep fucking with this. Because he's not going to be a high power back. That's not his game. Are the overalls better? 85? Okay, I don't know what's going on. Um, now he's 78 in the lead. We're going we're gonna to go with it. Uh, this is a realistic rebuild. If you look at the roster, we can't really do much other than draft and sign when it comes to it. So Jonathan Stewart, 30-year-old halfback, on the decline. He's with us for the long haul. Thomas Davis, 33 in this roster. He's 34. So Mike Adams, 35. 36 even. Wow, I'm, I'm fucking up. Um, Julius Peppers, 37. There we go. Um, these guys, we can't get rid of them. They're here. Charles Johnson's another guy that's kind of old. He's a little bit younger than you think. 30, I want to say. 29, maybe? 31. Yeah. Um, I thought he'd be like more like, I didn't think, but he, you know, some people might think he's closer to 33 or 34. The ages don't matter, all right? I haven't done one of these in a while. I feel like this is not a well-orchestrated video thus far. We're going to roll with it. Um, we can't really do much other than simulate sign draft and hope we do well get this team positions i want to upgrade defensive end cornerback safety of course and then the offense we need receivers offensive line is decent enough at the midseason mark we are four and four not in the best possible spot but xp looks pretty good christian mccaffrey could be on pace to win offensive rookie of the year depending on how well he's playing i'm not really sure defensive xp per usual is fairly low kind of annoying how that happens we got to re-sign Andrew Norwell. He's high priority, starting left guard. He's a beast. We need him back. Julius Peppers, he still plays really well, especially in real life as well. Uh, Graham Gano needs to come back. Star Latulale, I think I'm going to let walk. Uh, and then Ed Dixon, there's no real need to have him. 30-year-old tight end, we don't need him. But Andrew Norwell, for sure, 
Uh, I don't know about Julius Peppers, maybe on a one-year deal, but I think it's probably best to move past him. And then Graham Gano, for sure, we need back. So Andrew Norwell and Graham Gano have both re-signed. I really don't have a need for anybody else. Dorian Johnson is actually not bad. He's just asking for a little bit more than I'd like. We could eventually move him over to tackle. He's not really that bad. Uh, David Yankee, absolutely not. I'm actually going to offer him a contract. Due to how young he is, I think I can get away with offering him five years, and he accepts. So he's getting about 1.3 per year, um, and that will go up a little bit over the next five. We're going to simulate, though, to the playoffs, and I, I could have used XP. I'm actually going to stop and use it. Uh, could move him over to left tackle. That's where we have a pretty big need, I think. Matt Khalil just not going to work. Actually, we're going to do that right now. We're going to move him over to left tackle so we can get XP, actually. That's the move. Or what we could also look to do is move Andrew Norwell over to left tackle and keep Dorian Johnson as a guard and start him on the left. But I'm just going to spend our coach XP, advance to the offseason, and then take it from there. I think I'm going to spend it right now on O-line. And then I, I'm going to save the rest of it. I will see you guys for the playoffs. We are 4-6. and six. I think it's unlikely that we make it in the first year. That's fine. The real rebuild will start in the offseason, clearly. So we did not make the playoffs, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it. 6 and 10, it's a higher draft pick, so I don't think it's really that unfortunate for us as we only had two more wins the rest of the season. Cam Newton, 3,600 yards, 23 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. I might want to change his style because if he's mobile, he'll probably be rushing a lot. 69 rushes, 287 yards, and a touchdown. Jonathan Stewart, 9 touchdowns. Christian McCaffrey, only 4 touchdowns, over 1,000 yards rushing, though. Receiving, we had nobody with over a thousand yards. Greg Olson was close. Letter team in catches also had eight touchdowns. Uh, Christian McCaffrey, 21 catches, 230 yards, and two touchdowns. Blocking, sacks allowed 20 for Matt Khalil, 12 from Dorian Johnson. Sacks allowed is a dumb stat in this because it just it's way too inflated in simulation for whatever reason. Luke Keekley led our team in tackles with 123. Tackles for loss would be 13 from Starla Tulale, 11 from K1 Short. Sacks. 10 from Julius Peppers, the ageless wonder, would now be 38 at this time. 8.5 for Mario Addison, 7.5 for Latulale, 7 for short. Interceptions, 4 for Luke Keekley, 2 for James Bradbury. Force fumbles, 2 for Addison. Recoveries, 1 from a handful of players. Then touchdowns, we have none from the defense. Hoping that Christian McCaffrey won Offensive Rookie of the Year as the 12-3-1 led Packers uh, by Aaron Rodgers would win MVP. I didn't phrase that particularly well. A lot of ties. Seahawks, Steelers, all ties. Uh, what team am I doing? Panthers, NFC. So NFC Offensive Player of the Year is, of course, Aaron Rodgers. No Panthers in there, but Defensive Player of the Year goes to Brandon Graham. No Luke Keekley. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Mitch Trubisky, as Christian McCaffrey finishes at number four there in the top five. And Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Reuben Foster. Mr. I get arrested twice in the same month because I don't know how to stay out of trouble. <laughs> Burn. Got him. Oh, that was so brutal. Oh my goodness. How is he going to recover? All right, let's see who's available in free agency. We have 45 mil to spend. I doubt anyone solid is going to be here. Uh, we look at Cameron Brait maybe as an option. I don't really want him. It's the same free agents always here in year uh, one. I wish there'd be some kind of variation. And I know it's like, yeah, some players are more likely to resign and there's a percentage associated with that. And that's how they do it. But just for the sake of the game mode being a little bit more fun, a little bit more interesting is if different players were available when their contracts expire. Because there are a number of really, really solid players who con whose uh, contracts expire in this year, and they're never available in free agency. And what percentage of players go into free agency without a new deal and still end up going to the same team? A decent percentage of them. But not in this game, unfortunately. They always get re-signed for the most part. Um, and just no one's really here that I want. I saw Dante Moncrief. All right, that'd be another target for Cam Newton. Actually, I should probably go after Dante Moncrief. I offered Dante Moncrief close to five per year. It was it was like four or five, but still, I offered him a very lucrative deal to which he said, no, thank you. So, you know, we go to look at our other options, and I'm sure there aren't many. I see Danny Amendola. Chris, okay, the options here are still decent. Jerron Brown's not bad. It's all about route running with him. He's 6'2", still very fast. Quincy Anunwa could be a good shout. I think I think we might go after Quincy Anunwa. I didn't mean to do that. 
All right, hold on. Hold on a minute here. I like Quincy Anunwa for this team. Offered Quincy Anunwa a decent deal. Hopefully accepts. We're only one point ahead of the Colts. But Quincy Anunwa is coming to Carolina as he will be another target for Cam Newton. Uh, and I haven't spent really any XP except for on Dorian Johnson because I do want him to be my starting left tackle, at least for right now. I could kick him back inside. And Andrew Norwell could play left tackle, I suppose. That might be better. 62 speed. What is Dorian Johnson's speed? 63. Mm, not amazing. Receiving core is improved. Basically, in the draft, I'm looking to go after... Well, I talked about it earlier, but just to reiterate, receiver, defensive end, defensive tackle, safety, cornerback, and maybe offensive line, but likely not. We pick at number nine. Right off the bat, I see a very enticing player, Javier Ortiz, Javier, out of Texas. Hook him horns, of course. Looks pretty good. Uh, very, very high combine grade. That doesn't necessarily make me super interested in him. I really care about the stats, um, the, their attributes. But, you know, you guys will see. These names don't matter because they're going to get changed anyway. But, uh, yeah, I'll see you for the draft. This is one of the most solid draft classes across the board that I've seen. So... Here, us uh, Flacco goes number one overall quarterback. That's a fun storyline. We pick at number nine, and I know not everyone loves it when I trade back, but it's it's a good option a lot of the time. Um, there are some players I'm really interested in, and I'm not saying I'm going to trade back. Um, it's certainly an option and one that I'm going to heavily consider, as uh, there are some players on the board I really really want to draft. We're gonna have to make that call right now, so uh, yeah, let's think about that. So the top three guys I'm considering are, in fact, the top three guys on the board right now, if you go straight down in terms of guys I've watched. And again, their names will be changed for this first year uh, for some of these top players. Matt Feliciano, Brian Robertson, and Steven Russell Steffen. I guess that's an A. We're not. We're going to call him Steven. He's, it doesn't matter. It's going to get changed. Very, very solid player. Awesome top three skills and combine. Then you look at Brian Robertson, Auburn. Doesn't look like he had a great combine. But he's 6'1", he has great top three skills, and he's fast. 4'4", 5'40", yard dash is very good speed. And then you look at Matt Feliciano. 4'3", flat speed, awesome top three skills, going to be very elusive, not particularly small at 5'11". That, that height's going to get changed anyway uh, to match the player that he would be. And basically what it comes down to is what position is going to be uh, the most necessary for us to hit. And I think it's going to have to be wide receiver right now. There are some later down the board that I would consider, um, as I kind of have a lot of them watched, and some of them are very, very good. I just, I, I talked myself out of it. Talked myself out of it. I'm going safety. We're going strong safety. Steven Russell, welcome to the team. 80 overall out of Wisconsin. He will eventually be Derwin James. Very, very happy with his pick. He's ranked number nine. We took him at number nine, but 92 speed is awesome. 89 hit power, 82 zone. Very, very good player coming to the draft. He is 23 years old, and I think Matt Feliciano is going to be an incredible player. Uh, some of these other guys are going to be incredible as well. I'm not going to trade back up for them. They're just off the board. I will check later where they went, though, because I am curious. Wide receiver. So Robertson and Feliciano go back-to-back -back at 11 and 12. Bears and the Browns. It's very easy. I'm probably going to forget, though. I'm now in the second round, and I want to trade down a little bit here. A 2018-2 is a good pickup. I don't want a 2018 uh, or 2019 one. I want pick this year. I have two guys that I'm interested in, and I need a 2018 two to get it done, but I'm only looking to trade down. I think the Browns are going to be the best bet for me here to move down to 57, also pick up a four and a seven next year. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and probably look to trade back up into the top of the uh, third round, potentially, as my player goes literally at 56. Oh, that's so frustrating. He's insane, too. He's supposed to go middle of the third round. Takes him. Uh, you know, happens. All right. That's really, really frustrating. He's going to be insane. <laughs> He's going to be so good. All right. I'm just going to end up trading this pick down then. Um, and picking up two threes would be nice. I'm thinking more of a 2019, too, in here. Um, the 49ers just bone me oh, so hard. If I can get a 2019 two, yeah, we're getting a 2018. No, nope, that's that's trading down. We're also picking up a fourth with this trade, so I moved down a few spots. 2019 two and a 20. 
18 5. Um, I do have a lot of players I'm interested in. So what I think I'm going to do here is pick up another three from the Cowboys and another four. And hopefully our player is available at number nine here. He is available. Trey Daniel out of pit. Not particularly fast, but his top three skills are pretty good. I think he's very good value in the third round. He's ranked at number 23 in the class. We took him at 73. 89 speed is not ideal. 81 man, 77 zone, 87 press. He's a, he's a press corner. Um, that's really all he'll ever be because the speed just isn't high enough, unfortunately. Uh, not a bad pick, just not overwhelming. It is a third round, though. I mean, I can't expect to land absolute studs, I suppose. But I'm going to keep drafting for him. Thomas Tomas Donnelly out of LSU. Looks like another very solid player. We're going to take him here. And he is a 71 overall, purely based on scheme fit. He's going to be a higher overall defensive end. He's ranked number 66 in the class. We took him at 77. All I'm looking at, though, is 82 speed, 85 power move, decent tackle, block shed. It's just play rec and awareness that are going to be really low at 57 and 56, respectively. He's going to be a solid defensive end. And all it will be is upgrading play rec and awareness. He could be a starter for us as early as this season. Time to start taking some of these players, starting with Jamarion Patterson out of Lafayette. And again, I'm not sure how many names I'm going to change, um, but he is going to be our next pick. He's ranked number 20 in the class. We took him at 99. 90 speed, 83 route running is great. 84 catching is pretty good. 97 acceleration is fantastic. Jumping to 82 spectacular catch, 79 catching traffic. You love to see it. Very solid player here in the fourth. And I think we're, we've not even taken our best player yet. There's a defensive tackle I'm super interested in. I'm going to take him right now. Looks incredible. Awesome top three skills. I wish Blockshed was up in there instead of hit power. Doesn't really matter. He's young and he is insanely athletic. Awesome 40 time. Awesome bench. Everything in between. He's incredibly agile and explosive. He's going to be ridiculous. Ranked number 18 in the class. We took him at 109. Superstar development, 84 strength. 79 block shed, 87 power move with 78 speed, 83 acceleration. Going to be a perfect 4-3 defensive tackle as an interior pass rusher. Really, really solid player. The problem is, what player in that range would drop to the fourth round that could be sick? It's going to be difficult finding a name for him, I guess. Well, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Next up, I'm taking Lewis Allison out of Bowling Green State. Good top three skills. Very fast and agile. Here he is, 79 overall, ranked number 11 in the class. We took him at 125, 96 speed, 78 route running, 95 excel, 83 catching, 85 catch traffic, 85 spectacular catch, 92 jumping. Very, very good player. I, I told you, this was a very good all-around draft class, so there wasn't tremendous talent up near the top of the board, but these mid-round picks have been spectacular. We are absolutely killing it. This might as well keep that trend going, take another receiver uh, in this fella at a navy he's very very well rounded fast um good top three skills and he is a 71 overall ranked number 131 in the class we took him at 137 it's kind of weird that his overall so low considering he's decently fast good route running good catching good jumping good acceleration good spectacular catch catching traffic slow and release is going to be low um not a bad player though very good for this range i'd say it's round five Next up, we're going to take a safety out of UCLA. Justice Slate, ranked number 60 in the class. We took him at 169. 90 speed is awesome. That's exact baseline, lowest it can be. 81 hit power, 79 zone coverage. Very well-rounded. Excited with that pick. Not excited. I'm I'm comfortable with it. And maybe if we can wrap this up with another solid pick, uh, I will be quite pleased. Wide receiver if one's available. Normando Hobbs. Looks solid, but you know who also looks solid is Quandre Bradford. A little bit slow. Uh, so I think I'm going to instead take Normando Hobbs out of Boise State. Ranked number at 156 in the class. We took him at 201. He's so good apart from route running, and he's slow as shit. Looks like a fantastic tight end. If you look at everything, consider 84 speed, 88 catching traffic, 84 spec catch, 85 catching, 85 acceleration, 87 jumping. 79 release is not even that bad. 87 agility. Looks like a very good tight end. We don't know about run blocking, though. So do I move him to tight end? Uh, I think I actually might, yeah. 
Normando is a 74 overall tight end with absolutely no run blocking or route running. If I can get his run block up to a 60 and route running up to a 75, he'd be a very good replacement for Greg Olson, who is 33. His run blocking's awful, and he's still a really, really good player. There's a lot of potential here with uh, our friend Normando. I'm probably not going to bother changing his name. I'm only going to change the name of like some of the best players we've drafted. Um, you'll have to bear with me. So we've decided to go ahead and change Derwin James. Uh, Trenton Thompson, who I think he could have been a first-round pick, had a lackluster season uh, after injury. Great potential still. Could drop fourth-round pick maybe. Very, very good defensive tackle. And then we've gone with uh, Marcel Aitman out of Oklahoma State. Could be available in that range. Could be an elite jump ball receiver in the league. Um, so we have a good bunch of receivers. I think we're in a pretty good spot. Might look to change the scheme because Cam Newton's got to be a little bit more successful. And I'm also going to change him to balanced. Don't want him running as much. I want him throwing the football, getting this offense in a position to succeed because um, mobile just doesn't seem to work. Um... Tomas Jean-Francois is ridiculously good. He's got slow development, though. Something to consider. He is also still ridiculously good. And with the Browns, Matt Feliciano, also slow development. Also very, very good. And then with the Bears, it'd be funny if there's another slow development. Three players we missed out on, all slow development. He's an 81 overall, normal development. He is very, very good. Very good. Tomas Donnelly is also a uh, 74 overall at left end. He will get the start. Is that Deshaun Hall? No way. I forgot he was on this team. Uh, he's pretty mediocre, but he's not terrible. Uh, we're going to still start Mario Addison. Trenton Thompson will play defensive tackle. He is insane. And then Charles Johnson is going to get buried in the depth chart behind Tomas Donnelly. I think the rest should be fine. This is the squad. Going to need to have a good draft and free agency next year. The team has been upgraded. Spend some coach XP, and I will see you guys at the midseason mark. Midseason mark, we are 4-4. Four and four. That seems familiar. Craig Olsen is our top priority free agent. I will look to re-sign him. Um... I also didn't turn on auto scouting, so I'm going to do that. If you guys didn't know, I use auto scouting uh, when I simulate because I want those points to be spent. And then I turn it off for the offseason and actually scout. But since I didn't, I'm going to scout right now uh, and then go to re-signing. Some big re-signings out of the way. Greg Olson, Daryl Williams, Shaq Thompson, and Devin Funches. I do not want Jonathan Stewart. I do not want Thomas Davis anymore. I do not want Charles Johnson. I do not want Ryan Khalil. They're all going to have to walk. And um, yeah, I'm going to see you guys for the playoffs, which it doesn't look likely that we'll make here in Season 2. It's the way it works in simulation. I'm going to change the scheme for next year, 100%. We did not make the playoffs yet again. Finishing this time 8-8. Eight and eight. Two wins better than our previous season. Checking out the stats from around the league. We're going to stick just with the Carolina Panthers. 4,000 passing yards just about from Cam Newton. 32 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. Rushing, Christian McCaffrey, 1,100 yards, 8 touchdowns. Receiving, Quincy Nuna led our team in catches and yards. However, Greg Olson had 8 touchdowns. Uh, rookie Marcel Aitman, decent season as we see blocking. Dorian Johnson led up 23 sacks. Forgot that he's our left tackle. Thomas Davis led our team in tackles. Actually... Tied with Luke Keekley, who had more solo. Tackles for loss, seven from K1 Short. Quarterback sacks, seven and a half for Mario Addison led the team. Interception, seven from Luke Keekley, two from a handful of other players. And then force fumbles, three from Tomas Donnelly led the team. Fumble recoveries, he also had three. And it doesn't appear, no, we actually did. One defensive touchdown from James Bradbury as Russell Wilson takes home the league MVP title. Cam Newton at there at number seven. NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Devontae Freeman. Cam Newton there at number five. Defensive Player of the Year is Malik McDowell. Very interesting. Luke Keekley in there at number 10. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Matt Mayer of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Marcel Aitman at number three. Normando Hobbs at number six. Defensive Rookie of the Year is Tomas Jean-Francois, who is an 88 overall. Trey Daniel 
at number two. Tomas Donnelly at number three. Derwin James at number four. Figures. Even got Trenton Thompson in there at number eight. Figures. And you know what I bet you? Here's what I'll bet you. That uh, Tomas Jean-Francois, I bet you he doesn't have slow development anymore. Of course he doesn't. He has superstar. Why would he not? I don't know how he has it. It looks like he just got normal for winning defensive rookie of the year. Guess what? Fuck that. He has superstar now. Okay. That makes sense. That definitely that definitely makes sense. Why would it go from slow to superstar just like that? I don't know. Typical game, I suppose. Just they, they're like bending me over and they just keep pounding. Let's see for the offseason. In free agency, no one particularly enticing, I must say. Trent Brown. Trent Brown, actually, he definitely is. He has a lot of offers. Um, as far as others go, not really particularly interested in anybody. Although, um, I don't know. I feel like Trent Brown would probably be a pretty decent deal. Normal development. Run blocking is really low. Impact block is really low. He is 26. I'll offer him a deal. But I'm not going to go over six per year. So let's do let's do five, six, one. It's 100 total points. I am in the lead. That's a pretty good contract for a potential franchise tackle. Will we sign him? Remains to be seen, obviously. And we do. Trent Brown is the newest member of the Carolina Panthers as we are missing a center. Ryan Khalil heads to free agency. Dorian Johnson could fill that void. Could fill that gap. Um, I don't know. Fucking, he's up to an 81 overall left tackle. I'll probably slide him inside to play uh, center, and Trent Brown will play left tackle. Taylor Moten forgot about this fella. He's not particularly good. I'm out on that. Here in the draft, we pick inside the top 15. I'm pretty sure. Yep, at number 15, I'm gonna simulate straight there. Another decent class. There's some players I'm super interested in. We'll see if we can land them. It will be difficult to land everyone I want. I'm going to start with Heston Mullins out of Louisville. 6'2", good top three skills, fast enough. He's a 79 overall with superstar development. I don't care if he's ranked at number 27, we take him at 15. Very good. 90 speed, 81 man, 80 zone, 85 press. Superstar development. Highest overall cornerback on the roster. Welcome to Carolina. Round two, my preferred player is still on the board. Miles Hemsley out of Penn State. Excellent top three skills, not to mention... A solid 40, solid combine overall. Here he is, 80 overall, ranked number 15. We took him at 47, 84 strength, 80, 81 speed, 88 acceleration, 89 power move, upgrade block shedding. It'll be very solid. He's going to start at right end for us, replacing Mario Addison. So far, I haven't been screwed yet. Was that my middle linebacker? Might have been. That would suck. It was. Uh, maybe not that one, but my middle linebacker's gone. Um, wanted to draft a solid one and replace Thomas Davis. He unfortunately goes a little bit before I was able to grab him. We're going to go ahead and take the center here. Ashton Kuplin out of Illinois State. Good 40. Good bench. Good top three skills. He's going to be fantastic. 76 overall quick development. Um, the reason his overall is so low is because of awareness. Quick development is awesome. His attributes are also awesome. He's ranked number 38 in the class. We draft him at 79. 89 strength. 82 run block, 84 pass block, 84 impact blocking. Very, very good. Will start immediately for me. And um, the rest of the draft, I have nobody. I have nobody that I'm even remotely interested in. So it's pretty much, if I draft anybody good, you guys will see it. If not, I'll see you for the start of season number two. I'm not even going to draft anybody. I'm just going to, I'm going to trade down. I bet the CPU drafted some studs per usual. Oh, and they did. A fullback that I'm not interested in. Killer. And then two sub-69 overall players. So, yeah. Very good. This is the team that we're rocking with for season number two. I think it's very much improved, um, obviously, from the first season. I think Kuplin is a way better option than Ryan Khalil was. Uh, younger, better development. And overall, probably even better stat-wise than Ryan Khalil was at an 80 overall. I would say that very confidently. Defensively, it's a different story. We've improved very much in some areas. Trenton Thompson, phenomenal. Um, Hemsley, phenomenal. And Tomas Donnelly, I think has great potential. 
Uh, we're going to continue to start him. Hemsley will play right end and will absolutely start over Mario Addison. 100%. God, why is... I want to... Right, now I got to change that. All right. Um, Donnelly maybe will start at right end. Linebacker is tough. I really had a guy in mind I wanted to draft. He was not available at the time. It sucked. It is what it is. James Bradbury sliding down the depth chart a little bit. And I'm actually going to start Justice Slate over Kurt Coleman. I'm going to change the depth chart to my liking, and I will see you guys at the midseason mark. Coming up on the midseason mark now, I expect a better record than the previous year. Uh, it's not even close. We're 2-6. and six. Um, I don't have a reasoning for this, other than maybe the change scheme was not for the better. Mario Addison's a free agent. I'm not going to re-sign him. James Bradbury, it's probably in our best interest to let him walk as well. Vernon Butler, there's no need. There's no need to re-sign any of those guys. So we're definitely going to save money and be able to go after a free agent. I'm going to change the scheme. Uh, as much fun as a top pick would be again, I don't want one. I want to win. This LAC isn't working for me. I'm actually going to stick with it. I changed a different thing. I changed uh, from whatever it was, spread to balance or I don't know. I play around with it pretty often to figure out what's the best. I don't like to run spread all the time because I think the stats are inflated. And I don't like that. And sure, could our record be much better running spread? Yeah, but I don't I don't like to do it. So we're not going to unless things are going very badly as we've missed the playoffs again, finishing 6-10. and 10. We're going spread. Fuck it. Obviously, have missed the playoffs. That much should be a surprise to no one. We finished 6-10. and 10. Cam Newton, however... 4,470 yards, 24 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. Um, how do you play quarterback and throw 24 touchdowns? Only as a decent player. It doesn't work. Christian McCaffrey had an okay season, 1,000 yards, 12 touchdowns. Not bad. Receiving, we had multiple 1,000-yard receivers. Devin Funches and Marcel Aitman both had 1,100 yards and 7 touchdowns. Very similar seasons for these guys. Blocking. Irrelevant. We're not going to show it. Defensive, Luke Keekley led our team in terms of tackles with 155. Tackles for loss would be 8 from K1 Short. Sacks, 11.5 for the rookie Miles Hemsley. Interceptions, 2 from Luke Keekley led the team, 2 from Heston Mullins, who had 104 tackles. That seems like a lot. I'm going to try to change the defensive scheme as well um, because LAC wasn't working for me there. What I might try to do is look around the league and see who has the most interceptions and sacks and and copy what their stuff is. Um, let's go ahead. Let's see who led the team in interceptions. NFL interceptions was Ronald Darby. So Eagles. Are there any more Eagles in here? Because that's a lot for a player who isn't particularly amazing in Ronald Darby. Who is, I guess he's up to a 92 overall. His coverage wasn't that great, but he also led the league in interceptions. He made the Pro Bowl. DB of the year, defensive player of the year. He's very, very good now. Uh, maybe that's because of his system. I'm not sure. I don't see any other Eagles here uh, for interceptions. So no one else with over four. Uh, and then sacks, we have the Browns. Ben Nimmo of the Cardinals here. Plays right end. 99 power move. Okay, interesting. We could try out the Cardinals. They run a 4-3 of sorts. Um, Browns here, Jamie Collins with 11, even though they play a 4-3, that's peculiar. Kevin Dodd with the Titans. He, I know he's a very low overall for us, 78. And not even particularly good, 75 finesse moves, 66 power moves, got 10 and a half sacks with the Titans. We'd have to change a few things if we wanted to go that route. It's definitely possible. We need to pick up, um... What would we even need? Because we have Shaq Thompson's going to play middle linebacker in that scenario. Outside linebackers would be Hemsley, would be Donnelly. Um, and then we have Vernon Butler could play on the inside. We're going to change to a 3-4 and we're going to go Tennessee. Hopefully there are some solid free agents available. We do have some money to spend. Carson Wentz certainly would fit the bill on that one. Although I'm not really ready to replace Cam Newton. Kyle Fuller, certainly an interesting one. We do need a cornerback. Devondre Campbell would work. Miles Jack would work. Kind of. We don't really need 
a linebacker as much anymore. I think we're kind of set on that front. I could use an interior um, defensive lineman. So a 3-4 end would be solid. Brandon Williams doesn't really fit the bill on that one, despite him being listed at left end. David Onyemata would work. He has superstar development as well. I don't know when he got that. <laughs> I could work with that. He'd be a very good defensive end for me. Kyle Fuller as well, I'd like to have. I'm going to make an offer from him on him for sure. What's Kendall Fuller? I didn't even look at the picture. It's my bad on that one. Really, really want him. I should have looked at the picture before sounding like an idiot. And then David on Yamada, I will offer. Do five years. I would pay him as much as six and a half per year. Let's offer him that deal. 97 total points. Hopefully we can land him for our first, uh, or two of our first three free agent signings of the year. As both do end up accepting, that is gigantic for us. Gigantic. Very, very big. I can't state that enough. Offensive line really coming together nicely. But I want you to notice is even though these guys look like they're low overalls, Hemsley will be going after the quarterback. 91 power moves. We're getting him upgraded. Donnelly is in the exact same boat. We're not in a bad spot here. Luke Keekley and Shaq Thompson are two good middle linebackers. We're looking to upgrade free safety for sure. K1 Short is dropping off quickly as a good player. That sucks. What I'm going to do is keep David Onyemata at defensive tackle and move K1 Short over to right end. I think that's going to make the most sense for me right now. I know it's a speed rusher. That's going to go back to a uh, not speed rusher here in a moment. He is a 3-4 uh, run stopper right end. So I'm looking to upgrade, I guess, potentially even still defensive end. But free safety, I think, is the one weak point on our team. And you can see Barry Harbor um, won something or other. He made up the Pro Bowl. He got a ton of XP. And he's a 90 overall fullback. Again, not like that matters, though. Fullback is so irrelevant. Um, I guess he got a scout. Let's see you for the draft, though. Here we are in the draft, ready to have a good draft for our rebound season. The safeties are not particularly good. The class as a whole is not particularly good. I'm, I'm in a tough spot. I do want to take a baller. Baller cornerback says, hey, Roger Goodell, up yours. I'm skipping your combine. It's good top three skills as well. But there are a bunch of other good cornerbacks that I can choose from. Um, not true. They're all off the board. We're taking them. Taking the baller. 81 overall. That's what you do. He balls. 96 speed, 84 man, 81 zone, 85 press. Could he be my safety? Oh, it doesn't fit the bill whatsoever. No hit power, no block shedding. Tackle's not that bad. Could we have a safety that's purely a cover safety? It's possible. We're in the second round. I got players I want. He's a fifth-round guy, and he's my top available. Keenan Maxey looks phenomenal. We're taking him. 75 overall quick development, ranked number 41 in the class. We took him at 43. Supposed to go in the fifth round. He looks very solid. Uh, good strength, great tackle, great block shed, solid power move, good speed. He's a good pick. He's just He just looks nice. Um, he's not going to start at this point. This is season number three we're going into. Yeah, so maybe we'll do a fourth, but he'll probably never actually get in as I'm just going to take the rest of these players because they do look pretty solid for the most part. They're four seventh round guys, but they're better than they look. For example, Leonard Ray out of Duke. Looks very, very good. He could come in and start, but he doesn't really fit the bill. 77 overall, ranked number 51 in the class. We take at 67. Superstar development. Uh, I don't really have a spot for him. I don't. I don't really know what we're going to do with him there. But I do know that I'm going to be taking more seventh round projected players. We'll go with Rashad Boone out of Texas South. He's ranked number 78 in the class. We take him at 69, 84 speed, 83 zone, 82 hit power. He's just not fast enough. Can't start him at free safety. Another third rounder, though, from my trading down last year. Uh, Lewis. Come on, dude. Lewis, Lewis, Jean. Had <laughs> at LSU. Looks really good. Uh, it says it's a reach. I'm trying to figure out how. Because his strength is decent enough. His speed is awesome. His power move, awesome. It's 89. Play rec's low. Tackle's low. Awareness is low. There you go. 
that's why he's not very good, even though he is very good. But um, yeah, you know we won't be we won't be using him. Time to take another uh, another seventh round projected player, and that is Victor Windsor out of Minnesota. Uh, not not overwhelming. Yes, he's well rounded, solid. At the end of my draft, I'm not dealing with it. All right, this is a team that's gonna get stuff done. I can promise you that much. The offensive line is as good as it's ever been. Receiving core, same deal. Backfield, same deal. Even with an aging, regressing Cam Newton. This is a solid group. And I'm excited for what the future holds. Here, we have a predicament, though. One of these cornerbacks is going to play safety. It's whichever one has the highest tackle, hit power. Um, 76 hit power for Trey Daniel? That, that's our safety. I'm pretty much telling you that's our safety. There's almost no way that anyone could rival it. Um, Hughes, yeah. Daniel's going back. Uh, he's going back to play free safety. He's the slowest as well. It makes sense to move him back. And he actually fits the bill. His tackle isn't that bad. His hit power is fairly high. He is a 77 overall free safety. His development is only normal. But we can upgrade tackle. We can upgrade zone coverage, which is what I'm going to focus on, and block shed and awareness. And play rec, and he should be solid. I am ready for season number three. I am ready for success. I am ready for domination under the spread playbook. Here we go. Coming up on the midseason, I'd expect a better record. Two and five? You're kidding me. How? How? How is it two and five? No, I actually don't understand. And found, found rebuild. Madden Sim is literally screwing me here. The team is super good. Super solid. It is. I can't say anything other than that. It's a super solid team. Yet it isn't performing in simulation per usual. I'm not going to worry about re-signing right now. I'm just kind of upset. I'm going to simulate to the playoffs. See how we do. I, I don't know at this point. We've missed the playoffs again. However, we finished 7-9. and nine. Uh, it's really frustrating. Cam Newton broke the record for passing yards in a season. 5,493. It popped up at the lower left. He threw 28 picks. 44 touchdowns. Rushing. Christian McCaffrey had a really good season. 1,100 yards. 18 touchdowns. Receiving. Quincy Nunwa almost had 2,000 yards. 18 touchdowns. Devin Funches had an insane season as well. Uh, Christian McCaffrey even caught 11 touchdowns. Quarterback sacks. Not even that many. Defensively, Luke Keekley led our team in tackles with 142. Tackles for loss, 11 from David Anyamata. Sacks, 11.5 from Hemsley. Not all that many otherwise. Interceptions, 5 from Keekley, 3 from Fuller. I just wish Madden would fix their simulation stats. It's a huge, huge problem. One defensive touchdown, it's Derwin James, um, as we are second in the NFL in offensive yards, which leads me to believe that our defense must be failing us as Cam Newton, who broke the record for passing yards in the season, finishes in 5th. I guess they did go 7-9, and nine though, so reasonable. Christian McCaffrey somehow finishes ahead of Cam Newton. I guess if you rush for 18 touchdowns and catch 11, you're probably going to be high up there in Offensive Player of the Year as Cam Newton's at number 5. Defensive Player of the Year, Max Bulla. Strange. Luke Keekley at number 6. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Brendan Spring. All right. Any other Panthers? Any Panthers? Defensive Rookie of the Year, Nick Hughes at 3. Rashad Boone at seven. All right, season four. Season four, we're going to have to make the playoffs and win it all. Yep, that's what's going to have to happen. Free agents, Cam Newton, Christian McCaffrey, Taylor Moten's there on the right side. I wish my controller would reconnect. Um, I should probably just get batteries, but nah. We're not going to do it. Taylor Moten's actually like higher overall, but I don't need him. I want Christian McCaffrey back 100%. I'll offer him six years to resign until he's 31. Uh, he resigns. Cam Newton is regressing. He's playing with a ton of confidence, but I mean that's certainly not good to see. Um, realistically, can I let him go after his past season? No, I can't. I have to resign him, uh, and he's going to test free agency. Psych, you're not. I'll pay you 28 million. <laughs> We're going to franchise tag him. I have to keep Cam Newton after that season. I have to. I have to. I know there's probably going to be a sick QB in free agency, but...
but we have no money to sign anyone since we're paying Cam Newton $28 million per year. There are a bunch of... Oh, I saw two. Cam Robinson's a 99 overall. Dalvin Cook is a 98 overall. I don't want either of them. That's not totally true. I want Cam Robinson. I don't have the money to pay him. We're fine with our current offensive line. It's not realistic that we'd go after a tackle in free agency. However, Cam Newton needs to be upgraded as best he can. Uh, and it's kind of expensive to do that. I'm going to upgrade medium accuracy. He's up to an 88 overall. I don't know, man. I got coach XP. I got a ton of XP for some of these players. Like Marcel Aitman has 43K. How'd you get that? Pro Bowl? Makes sense. Um, Might have. I mean, he should have with those numbers. Bunch of XP for outside linebackers. That is good to see. Not much for really anybody else, though. Uh, I'm going to simulate to the draft. Our draft pick will be irrelevant. I don't, I'm don't. i not going to draft any player that's going to come in and start. There's just no possible way. Unless maybe a wide receiver, but there's no reason to draft one. Maybe a tight end, but there's not really a reason to draft one. And then defensively, our overalls are too high, unless we maybe got an outside linebacker. There's really no one that we draft that would ever come in and play. I'm going to upgrade these players. You guys are going to see. They're very solid. Um... But I mean, there's no reason to draft, unfortunately. As uh, I look down into my controller and think that maybe that's where my mic is. I should talk into it. This is the fully upgraded team. Marcel Aitman is a monster. Wish I could get that spectacular catch up. Um, but the receiving core is, I think, overall very, very good. Defensively, I'm not sure how he had as much XP as he had. But Leonard Ray... Um, had a ton of XP for not even playing, and I'm not sure how. He just kept getting XP. Um, which, I, I mean, I'm not complaining. He doesn't fit the system at all. At all. If we check out his stats from this past season, he doesn't fit at all. He had eight total tackles. And he had like 20-something K XP. Will I start him over Tomas Donnelly? It's looking more and more likely and just use his XP to upgrade him. So if we do make the playoffs, I mean, it's not going to be contingent on one player, but we can make him sick for our purposes. I'm going to start the NFL draft and just probably guess randomly at players, hopefully hit one. See if anybody is real good available. I don't know. What I could do is take an outside linebacker and move back to a 4-3. We haven't... Did I scout anybody? I thought I had auto scouting on. I didn't. Um, all right, time to blindly guess. Do we need a pass rusher? No. Do we need... We're going to take maybe the top middle linebacker available. Gerald Ransom. That's a sick last name. We're going to take him. He is shit. Okay. I'm, I'm done with the draft. Just took a 71 overall safety. Um, I didn't, There's no point to be here. All of my drafts are cold, calculated, precise. I take the best player available in my need, or I trade down. I'm not just going to blindly guess and hope to hit the lottery. It's not going to happen. I was going to sign Jarek McKinnon in free agency. Uh, I need a backup running back. He should, in, or he should fit in quite nicely. Also, on the basis of switching to a 4-3, Trenton Thompson would go back to defensive tackle. Who is this? I draft this guy? Looks familiar. Dang, he's really good. Um, We could go back to a 4-3. Ray at outside linebacker. Luke Keekley at middle linebacker. Shaq Thompson at outside linebacker. Move Hemsley back to end. Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go back. We, just, we can't generate anything in this 3-4. There's no point to stay in it. So this is the full team. Things have been changed. We're going back to a 4-3, I hope. The playbooks are always wrong in this, which I hate. Um, Hemsley is up to an 89 overall at right end. Donnelly at an 83. Shaq Thompson, 87 at outside linebacker. It's a solid team. It won't perform in simulation because simulation is, uh, excuse my language, but screwed. See you guys for the playoffs. All right, week 17. Here we are. We missed the playoffs. Oh, we made the playoffs. 11-5. and five. Um, Bucks went 0-16. That's fun. To show I didn't cheat per usual. Uh, there's no reason to. 
all that I get from complaining, uh, excuse me, not complaining, all that I get from doing terribly at the game and simulation is I, I get to complain, which I love to do. Uh, only force win home is a bye week, of course. The rest, none. Uh, particularly, I just don't care. Uh, and I don't mean, again, why, excuse my French, I don't mean to talk crap about this frigging game. Um, but here's where a lot of my issues lie. And I know we did go 11-5. and five. I think that's a respectable record for a team of this caliber. Because it's a really, really solid team. Here's my main issues, right? We're going to lay it out so you guys, you guys really clearly understand me and get me. Um, number one. Playbooks, schemes are the most important thing in simulation. It should not be this way. It shouldn't be. And I know in real life, okay, coaches make some worse teams on paper play better. I know that's a thing. I'm very aware. In a video game, if you're trying to emulate real life, fine, fine. But make it consistent. You can't have the shitty chargers who play poorly in real life all the time with that roster, have not made the playoffs. They dominate in simulation consistently due to their playbook somehow or something. The Chargers always do well. We look at a team like the Panthers. Last year, we went 6-10 and ten with a very, very solid team. Very solid team. You know, and another problem here, as I'm going to say, I'm going to dictate it to you guys. If I have all 85 overall pluses at every position, that is the best team in the NFL. That is the most well-rounded team in the NFL. I would say that there is really, base roster, no lineup that's that talented in terms of overall. And that should be one of the most important things, especially in simulation, right? Um, and I think part of the reason that we don't play up to snuff is that other teams pace far differently over a course of three or four years than they should. If we went to the, if we go to the Patriots, right? How on God's green earth do they have this many 99 overalls? And I'm not sure why Shaq Mason's appearing at a 98 or a 92. I don't know what his overall is, but I don't know how these players, there's just so many, oh, that's, a, that's awareness. All right, here's overall. Um, it, uh, CPU just upgrades awareness. That's what it comes down to. But I don't know how they have so many high overalls when this isn't a real team. No one has this. No one has that in any roster. In real life. Look at the Ravens, dude. I'm just saying, like, teams don't pace like they do in real life, and that really bothers me. Because um, then it's it's harder to perform in simulation when you have everything going against you with playbooks, with schemes, with everything like that. And then you can have a better team than anyone that you'll face, yet you won't win the games in simulation. And it's just it's just frustrating. Regardless, I've ranted enough. I'm going to upgrade our players. And catching, by the way, that's not even a stat that impacts overall. I'm positive on this one because I've tested it. Look at that. Catching up to a 91 overall unchanged. Up to a 94 unchanged. And I know overall doesn't matter. In simulation, it does. How do these stats not... How does catching, the most important thing for any wide receiver, how does catching not impact overall? That's like saying blocking shouldn't impact an offensive lineman's overall. What else do they do? I'm, I'm just saying, man. I feel like you guys should understand my frustration. If you if you, if you guys have done these yourself... No, if you, if you guys have done this yourself, you know... Simulation is friend to no man, and um, I mean, there's not really much else to say. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, and um, we're not dogs out here. EA, dog, chews up all these little, little. I guess we're dogs in that analogy. Um, I don't know where I'm going with this. I'm just going to use some Coach XP, and then probably get eliminated in the first round of the playoffs, uh, because, you know, that's what happens. Also, another quick thing, and then I'll be done. Specialists, what kind of fucking tomfoolery is this where none of them get any XP? They never have any awareness, so it keeps their overall painfully low. 93 kick power, 88 kick accuracy. What is more important as a kicker than power and accuracy? Those are the two stats that you care about. The two stats. Awareness 
What does he have to see the ball that he's kicking? Yeah, I guess. But like, Jesus, man. <sighs> Panthers, Eagles, wild card playoff matchup to advance to the divisional. Let's go ahead and look at the Eagles roster. I'm just curious. I'm just curious what their roster's like. Pretty fucking good. And they're in the wild card round of the playoffs. That's going to do it for this video, guys. I wish they'd fix trading so I could do some more fantasy rebuilds. I know you guys like them a lot. This is my first one back. And um, overwhelming success. I think we can all agree. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.